Hi everyone, welcome to Ship Talk. My name is Jared, co-founder of Logistic, where we help companies better monitor, manage, and reduce their shipping costs. Today I'm joined by my amazing colleague, Brian, uh, to discuss another one of our favorite topics, negotiating carrier agreements. How do most companies approach carrier negotiations? Uh, the most common way is uh, they usually call up their carrier and say something like, uh, you know, our costs are going up, we need better rates. Or they'll call the carrier and say, I just got a proposal from your competitor and uh, I need you to match it. So it sounds like it's just kind of a cookie cutter approach that they use with you know, other vendors that they may be negotiating with. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh, data or... Um, let's say science that was behind it. They're planning. just basically just, yeah, not a lot of planning. They're just calling in the carriers and saying, hey, I need better rates. What can you do for me? In your opinion, why isn't it just as simple as creating a competitive environment? Based on the way the carriers charge for every single package now, if you were to look at the data behind every package that goes out the door, uh, it's not a straight shot of just, uh, it's a ground package going to zone six and it's $10. There's uh, anywhere from probably three to five different charges that any package gets hit with along the way from point A to point B and everything in between. So you've got um, several charges, several different charge types, uh, and on any given invoice, you're probably looking at, depending on the size of shipper, you're probably looking at thousands of rows of data. Um, and again, each tracking number probably has at least two, three, up to five different charges associated with it. So yeah, understood. And another important factor is that really at the end of the day, every single agreement is customized, right? I mean, you can have two companies literally next door to one another shipping the exact same widget yep. to the exact same customer, and they're going to have two different agreements, right? So it's not standardized. Every carrier agreement is customized. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. There, there are what we would consider in the, uh, in the space... Um, briefcase pricing where an account manager might be able to just throw a, a certain agreement out, but it is basically based on that customer's at least spend, if nothing else. So in the auto industry, there are certain resources for car buyers like uh, TrueCar or KBB, um, and they are designed to help level the playing field when buying a car, right? It's, right. it's information and data that a buyer has to take with them or to do research prior to buying a car. Right. Um, are there similar type resources for small parcel shippers? Absolutely, there's uh, companies like Logistic, obviously, and there's a myriad of, uh, of others like us uh, out there that uh, can arm any customer with, uh, with all the information they need to basically make the right decisions and push the right buttons, pull the right levers, and uh, get the custom pricing that they need in place. But aside from companies like Logistic and others in our space that are able to offer that insight, there's not really any standardized resources or there's not any forums where shippers can go to uh, determine what their pricing should be, correct? Right, right. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing really out there outside of companies like Logistic and others like us. So in your opinion, Brian, does negotiation expertise and experience translate from other industries to the small parcel industry? Um, it could, just from a high level. Um, you'd really want to truly understand the data behind, uh, you know, your, basically your supply chain, uh, especially on the small package side, uh, understanding what impacts every single charge uh, and things like that. So from a negotiation standpoint, having a negotiation or negotiating skills helps, but if you don't really understand the data or everything that goes, goes into the charges behind a package, then um, you're only gonna get so far within that negotiation. Sure, and one of the things I've heard you say is that it doesn't matter how good of a negotiator you are if you don't know what you're negotiating for. So oftentimes we come across companies that say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a great negotiator, but at the end of the day, you know, they may be negotiating with their carrier, what, once every year at, at most? Most of the customers that we talk to um, wait until at least two to three years that their current, that their carrier agreement's in place. Uh, we have very few that do it every year. Sure. So it's, I mean, let's continue to riff off the car analogy. You know, if I go to buy a car, um, the dealership is always going to have the upper hand because they are in the business of selling cars. That's what they do every day right and i as a consumer am buying a car you know 
very infrequently. And right. So my experience um, specific to negotiating a, a car, um, the dealership is absolutely going to have the upper hand right. because that is what they do day in and day out. Right. And although I may be skilled at negotiating carrier agreements, for example, uh, that doesn't necessarily translate to right. negotiating a great deal when buying a car. Right. Would you agree? Yes. So Brian, what would you say is most often overlooked by those who negotiate their own carrier agreements? Well, as we like to say, there's really two sides of a negotiation or two, two key components in a negotiation. You've got the, the science part, which is all the data that I've been uh, referring to, right? Is knowing all the data and the, everything that goes into a, the modeling. A package. Yep. All the characteristics for each package move and everything. On the flip side of that, or in conjunction with that, you have what we would consider the art or the emotional side of the negotiation. And that piece, I think, is what's usually, uh, if you've got the data side drilled down and it's and you're you're 100 good there what's usually overlooked is now you've got the art side which is really getting the carriers to sit up straight in their chair and understand what you're looking for and why you're looking for it uh, you put those two together and you've got a really good complete negotiation yeah that's a great point point. and somebody like you who worked for one of the carriers for just over 26 years uh, definitely understands that carrier psychology but to your point yeah you can have all the data that you need um, for a successful outcome, but there could be something that uh, happens specific to the relationship with your carrier that can that can impact the outcome either favorably or unfavorably based on uh, whatever it is that happens. Right, exactly. So Brian, what is one tip you can give everyone watching um, in an effort to negotiate a best-in-class carrier agreement? Uh, I think the biggest thing, or well, probably one of the most important, if not the most important, is ensuring that once you understand the data and everything that's driving uh, the certain characteristics of your, basically your supply chain, it's going in with a plan. So ensuring that you have a solid plan along with um, data that's driving the negotiation, I think it'll, it'll come out to the best negotiation you can ever have. Sure. It's kind of a unique environment in that um, at the end of the day, in a lot of shippers' minds, they really believe they have two choices when shipping small parcel, right? right? UPS and FedEx. And although there are some alternatives to UPS and FedEx, uh, a lot of shippers uh, believe that those are their only two options. Right. And so, you know, it is an industry where uh, there is a, a lack of competition in that regard. And I think what we see a lot of the times is uh, shippers feeling like they are not in a position of control or power yes. when negotiating with their carrier because at the end of the day, uh, they're using UPS, for example. They may not like FedEx or vice versa. They're using FedEx and they may not like UPS. And so in their mind, they really only have one option, right? right? So totally agree. I think going in with a plan, um, that is customized, uh, not the same approach that you would take with uh, or when negotiating with other vendors and in other industries right. uh, will yield the most favorable outcome. Yes. All right, Brian. Well, thank you so much for the insight and thank you everyone for watching. For more information on how you can join the thousands of businesses currently using Logistic to help monitor, manage, and reduce their shipping costs, please visit our website at www.logistic with the J com where you can create a free account. Till next time, take care.